Earlier, I talked in more detail about this topic with two experts in the field of genetics. Marcy Darnofsky is the executive director at the Center for Genetics and Society at Berkeley, California. And David King is the founder and director of Human Genetics Alert, a research watchdog group in London. I began by asking David King what his biggest fear is regarding this type of IVF treatment. Once we cross this crucial ethical line, which governments around the world have stated for the last 30 years, that basically we shouldn't genetically alter human beings. Once we cross that line, it will be practically impossible to go back, and we will gradually, step by step, get to the point of the world that we everybody says they want to avoid, which is the sort of consumer eugenic market of, the, of designer babies. Um, that's that's the why I think we should really stick to this line, and we shouldn't do we shouldn't use techniques like this. Well, Marcy, I want you to weigh in on that as well, because we have the science here. If the science is available and it came out of perhaps some sort of need. Shouldn't people have the choice to use that science? Well, it's not that simple. We don't actually have the science at this point. The safety of these procedures is very far from um, shown. And to attempt it in human beings really does amount to human experimentation, putting these children who were trying to um, allow to be born without disease at risk of other kinds of abnormalities and their children as well because these genetic changes would then be inherited through the female line to all subsequent generations. And um, the need is also not quite what it sounds like from some of the reports about this. The um, UK Department of Health and scientists who have been involved with this acknowledge that there are maybe 10 women a year in the UK who would even be candidates for considering this procedure. And it doesn't have any um, impact at all on people who are living with mitochondrial disease and suffering from it. It's not a treatment. It's to um, try to allow women who are at risk of passing on a very small subset, one kind of mitochondrial disease, it's a, to allow them to have children who are completely genetically related to them, except for the mitochondrial DNA, and would be unaffected. But they do have other alternatives, and while they're they're situation is certainly sympathetic. There are so many far safer ways for them to have children and healthy children. Well, how would this be creating designer babies? Let me ask you that, and then I'll get Dr. King to weigh in on that. Mm -hmm. um, this particular procedure would change the genes outside the nucleus, and it has to do with metabolism which affects many organs of the body during development and afterwards. So it's not in this case that we're going to be deciding a child's um, athleticism or hair color or skin color. But as Dr. King said, um, the concerns about the slippery slope are real. This is one where um, we're skidding, the, we're, skidding the, we're, we're greasing the skids. And a number of the figures who are involved in this discussion and proponents of this very, very radical and risky procedure have said explicitly that they would not rule out kind, the, the kinds of genetic, inheritable genetic modifications that are, are certainly designer baby procedures. Well, Dr. King, let me get you to answer to that, because isn't the IVF process difficult enough as it is? Would it be hard to find a third person to participate and really, if this all comes to fruition, as you think it may in your country, wouldn't it be very difficult to uh, choose uh, a to have a designer uh, a baby, so to speak? Wouldn't there be specific regulations well, in place? Um, firstly, I'll address the point about the, te the technique itself, because I think um, one thing that's really been missed out of the most of this debate is that there are really serious risks uh, to the children themselves from this technique. Um, it's an extreme manipulation of embryos, goes far beyond anything that we currently use in IVF. And we know that the more invasively you manipulate embryos, the greater the risk to the child. On the other, and uh, we, as, as Dr. Darnowski said, there are actually already perfectly good, safe, reliable techniques for doing this, one of which is conventional egg donation, simply taking an egg from another woman and fertilizing it with the, with the male partner's sperm. Now, uh, so all these techniques add, actually, is that the mother gets to be 
uh, genetically related to her child, which you don't get from egg donation. Well, now, anybody can understand that uh, a mother would want to be genetically related to her child, um, but it's actually not a medical benefit for either the mother or the child. And when you weigh that against the risks to the child from the techniques itself, um, you know, the conventional rule in medical ethics is you don't subject your patient to significant risks unless you can deliver a really significant medical benefit to the patient. Uh, you know, that's not what's, that's not, that's not what's happening here. Um, as for um, the, you know, the regulation that ha uh, will be available further down the line, I would have a lot more confidence in that if we didn't have a regulator in this country which basically never says no. Um, it hasn't said no at any point in its history. Uh, it always does what the scientists want to do. It even kind of acts rather as a, a cheerleader and kind of skews the whole consultation process to get the result that it, that it wants. I've done a quite de detailed analysis of how, how it did that in this case. Um, so I really don't have much confidence that the system is actually capable of stopping us from taking those one steps after another after another and ending up in that world of designer babies.